one of those eternally cold evenings. And it was the last night of the year. People rushed along the street clutching their overcoats, doing their last minute shopping. It was a New Year's Eve no different from any other, except perhaps for the fact that it was no longer necessary to fight for a taxi, since satellite supported traffic guidance systems and optimized mass transit had become the norm in all of the world's major cities. Systems manufactured by the company that I work for, which at the turn of the millennium had become the leading company of its kind worldwide. time I was working in the server center and Cheryl was in the legal department. Cheryl was incredible. I felt like I knew everything about her. Well, she probably didn't even know I existed. That I finally had the courage to speak to her still astounds me today. I've never seen you here before. Where do you work? Hello? Oh, um, Matt, uh, the server center. Server center called Matt? No, 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 I meant the, the, the my name is, is Matt. Cheryl. Pleased to meet you, Matt. Hi. I'm Phil. Conceited jerk, he almost turned purple with rage. Life was a beach, a single, endless white beach, and it was all mine. Hi, where are you at? Oh, thank you very much. About your romantic love made back there. <laughs> I really hate to spoil your sweet little fancy, but the New Year's Eve night shift unexpectedly not covered. I have plans too, of course. So I just figured we'd draw straws. Ooh, geez. Sorry, Matt. Some guys have all the luck, huh? Well, I'm sure you won't object to my brightening the ladies now. Dim prospects via a little night on the town with me, huh? I mean, since you're busy. What was her name again? Shit, now I remember. Cherie. Oh. This one of yours? I found it in the john. By the way, you're planning on running around the network? I'd pay attention to my new cyber time branch off, linked to the, how do we call it, uh, Stone Circle. Greenhorns like you should stay away. But I was just down there for the first time myself. Very cutting edge stuff, and you wouldn't want to get cut. <laughs> Happy New Year, Matt. It may well be that Phil is a fantastic programmer, but I found him unbearable. The CyberTime project was his super baby. A virtual experience that offered direct access to knowledge and a universal view of the past in order to perfect the visions of the future. Or something like that. 
In any case, right now, I was troubled a lot more by the present. Just imagining Cheryl and Phil together at some party made my mood drop to absolute zero. Somebody's still there in New York. It's Jeannie Chang, Singapore. Hi, uh, Matt Collins. What can I do for you, Mrs. Chang? It's Jeannie. You won't believe how wonderful it is you're still around. We have a real problem here. Our customer, the city of Singapore, just called. Perfect timing. It's 8.15 in the morning here, and our offices are still closed. Half the world is celebrating New Year's Eve, while the other half is recovering from it. I bet you're on your way to some party. Me? No. Forget it. What was your problem? Well, I only know this much. There was an unexplainable drop in the power supply in the middle of the night. And the whole system went up, and then down, and then up again. It was just for a few seconds, then everything returned to normal. There haven't been any further unusual incidents, but perhaps you could help me. Jeannie's call had interrupted me in my darkest thoughts, and somehow I was grateful for that. And while she gave me the details, the system automatically filtered the keywords in order to assist me looking for available knowledge. I was reminded that 10 years ago, something like that would have been completely impossible. At that time, it was often very difficult to find and put together the necessary knowledge for new problem solutions. Today, our own worldwide network assisted us to find and track down the best available knowledge. An appointment was arranged with the person owning this knowledge, and then you met in cyberspace. It was as simple as that. Time optimized processes. Four out of 432. Overwhelming. It's not that bad for New Year's Eve. <laughs> At least we're not alone. Whatever you say. Any place in particular you'd like to go? Wherever you want to go, Matt.
dear friend. It was really most uh, impressive how courageously you stood by this, this charming young woman. Uh, however, I, I must admit, it is a little bit inconvenient for me as I was just on my way to found the company. But given these completely new premises, I think that I will have to do it tomorrow. Matt. Between Werner Siemens, Johann Georg Halska, and Johann Georg Siemens, the following company contract shall be closed. That's impossible. Permit me. Siemens, my name. Werner von Siemens. Werner Siemens, plain and simple, at your service. Would you mind if I take my leave of you now? There's a lot of work waiting for me. You, you can't go. Where are we? Uh, when are we? Jeez, what's the date today? You really are a strange young man. Berlin, October 1st, 1847. Why? October 1st, 1847? Yeah? Listen, you must found your company today. And why, if I may ask? Because that's the date it was founded. I am one of, in a manner of speaking more or less, one of your employees. And if you don't found your company today, everything will be different tomorrow. Uh, the time paradox, the past, the future. Do you understand what I mean? You are a little bit excited, young man. The accident, your nerves. Please excuse me now. My Proline. Herr von Siemens. Siemens. No phone. Will you found your company today? On dirty papers. My regrets. Wow. What a simulation. Matt? This is real. chance to explain. Airphone Siemens. Siemens. Werner Siemens. Middle class from head to foot. You really must understand that, young man. You you will be raised nobility in, in 1888. Well, very well. What an amazing prospect. And now, goodbye. Decisive for this will be your contribution to science and electrical engineering. Your needle telegraph and, and use of enormous electric flows They'll contribute to the rise of a new age. Your ideas are also revolutionary, but not more than a hint of what will come. One day, one day the entire world will be covered by a telegraphic network, which will make it possible for people to travel anywhere in almost no time to communicate with any human being, no matter where they are. Well, now I really think you are exaggerating a little bit, my Freinlein. On the contrary, she's... Please. Give us a chance. Remarkable. I think I begin to understand. Not merely a network for transmitting information, but more. A telegraphic network of the senses through which you can take up contact with any person at any time. The fifth dimension. A fantastic vision and quite according to my taste. And it all works through these strange eyeglasses? Yeah. Fantastic. Thoroughly and absolutely fantastic. A world of unlimited communication. But don't think that you have convinced me with this. Even if you have remarkable ideas, that does not prove at all that you are from the future. 
Not any more than this unpleasant fellow I met this morning. Even if he was just as strangely dressed as you are. Phil? Was his name Phil? Indeed. I very nearly forgot my foundation appointment with Halska because of this obtrusive... Now I get it. The power failure in Singapore. Phil made a test run of his new Cyberlink at midday today. That means he was down here. And on account of him, our host nearly failed to found our company. You mean Phil programmed all this? Elevator Phil? Right, but it gets worse. Midday back home was last night in Singapore. They had an unexplained drop in the power supply, and I'll bet it was because of Phil's cyber time touristic activities. Hmm. But that was just a slight ripple in the pattern of time. My God, it's unimaginable what could happen if you really didn't found our company today. Which way did he go? Who? Phil, uh, the unpleasant one. Oh, him, through the wardrobe. Wardrobe? Most exactly. I checked, but there is no door. The wardrobe? That must be the exit this genius program. But there is no... Well, what do you say to that? Extremely indiscreet of you, I must say. After all, these are my private clothes. Matt. Oh, here. Here, try these. Never belong to those who close their minds to convincing arguments. Then you will certainly found your firm today. That depends. On what? On whether this company is worth it, of course. What did you think? hidden behind my bedroom cupboard. You know, these things aren't really here. Rather, it's our senses that make us believe well, that it we... is always our senses that make us believe in things, my friend. I had little to say against that. On the contrary, I was slowly beginning to ask myself whether the real world wasn't just a more perfect form of cyberspace. The only difference being that some careless programmer forgot to add the exit program to the main menu. Anyway, I had made a mess and getting out was no longer an option. The only solution was a forward retreat. If we failed to convince this man from another time of what essential importance the foundation of his company had for the world of tomorrow, I preferred not to think about what would happen then. What is in 1997? Why? It is uniquely marked. In 1997, this company became 150 years old. And more than that, this date marks a, a fundamental change of business. Mm, what kind of change? 
Well, at the end of the 20th century, hundreds of national markets became a single global one. It was clear that only the most intelligent and best organized companies would be able to meet the demands of the future and understand how to make use of these new opportunities that were opening up to them. Cheryl's astounding knowledge in matters of company history rescued me once more. And I began to ask myself how I would ever be able to perform such complex tasks as tying my shoes without her. She told Siemens that in 1997, the top program really started to change the company. A program mobilizing the entire power within the company in order to join the most efficient and profitable companies worldwide, and which has made our company what it is today. The leading house for the fulfillment of extensive and complex tasks on the sectors of electrical engineering, electronics, and software. A company which was responsible for the world embracing technical infrastructures built to satisfy the basic needs of the people and their lives in the 21st century. Like the generation of universally usable electrical energy, its transportation over enormous distances, the application of electrical energy and electronic intelligence for solutions and products in almost all areas of life. The guarantee of unhindered mobility of the human being, in individual vehicles or by mass transit. The communication of the human race amongst themselves in language and pictures. The technical support of human health. The generation of artificial light. And everything from the manufacturing of individual products right through to innovative services for the customer. It seemed to please Siemens to see the human being at the center of all the efforts of his company. Of course, he only understood a fraction of the technical details. How could he possibly imagine what far-reaching importance the terms electronics and software would have? Accordingly, he restricted himself to rather general questions about the attitude and philosophy of the company. And while I began to ask myself if we would ever be able to satisfy Siemens' thirst for knowledge, I was well aware that the time we had was running like sand through our fingers. Thus the company, which as one of the most attractive employers on the planet, attracts the most skilled experts in the world, is both feared internationally as a competitor and respected, yes, as an ideal. But what was the key to such a tremendous success? It's the courage to do something new and the determination to take over responsibility. Science. A never-ending search for previously known. I would say known. that it's a high degree of competence of individual employees, which make them to the most important supporting pillars of the company. Yes, you're right. All of you, and I assure you, I'm deeply impressed by all that I have seen and heard here. However, what I mean is something different. What holds our company together internally? What matter of concern is it? that unites the highest with the lowest employee and which would be stronger than prestige, profit, progress, growth. How can it be described? This idea that makes this company, our company, unique and which would give me more than sufficient reason to found it. It is the belief, no, it is the certainty that it is only the responsible use of technology which can solve the problems of the human race. Also those problems that have been created by the technology itself? Those as well.
I arrived in Berlin from Mecklenburg at the age of 17. I traveled by foot and it took several days because I owned nothing. Apart from my hands, my intellect and the dream. It was the dream of a worldwide business like the Fuga, as I called it in my youth. The dream of a company which through continual invention and entrepreneurial vision contributed to the increase of the knowledge and well-being of mankind and which, and this is my firm belief, is economical in just this combination. Herr Fonsi, Herr Siemens, I have only one question. Does this company, the company which you've just seen, your company, does it fulfill your dream and is it worth being founded? Yes or no? I must admit that my dream has been surpassed a little bit by reality. <laughs> Come on now, yes or no? Say it. Come on, say it. Will you go back and found our company? Yes. <laughs> what? I didn't hear that. Did you, Cheryl? Not a word. <laughs> yes! You can do better than that. Louder. Shout it out. To the world. Come on! It's now or never! Will you found our company? I miss him. I wish he could still be here with us. He is, in a manner of speaking. Can we just go visit him every now and then? What do you think? I think that'd be great. But we can't. We were very lucky. And there won't be a next time. Why not? Because what you don't know is, on New Year's Eve, Phil's dangerous toy was... mysteriously destroyed by an unknown virus. And somehow, I'm not a bit sorry for him. What do you have there? Nothing. It's a long story. Do you think we really experienced all of that? Let's put it this way. That was a simulation. I just deleted the best one ever created. But that's the whole point. Simulation should be as real as you can pop. Don't talk. Happy New Year, Matt.
don't know whether life isn't just a more perfect form of cyberspace. But then, who is the programmer? And where are we sitting? What kind of strange eyeglasses are those, Seaman? We'll have good use for these. You'll see, Halska. Apart from that, there is no time to lose. We must found our company today. It's an absolute necessity. Are you feeling well, my friend? But of course, what do you think? Never better. You won't believe what I have seen today. Only this. A splendid future lies ahead of us, Holska. It is, in fact, thoroughly and utterly fantastic. Have you ever heard of microchips? What? It's a, a wireless transmission of moving pictures. Should have seen it. Electrically driven, talking coaches. The future, Halska, I have seen the future of our farm. However... to our company. It's up to you now. Cut. Cut. Stop.
the same like no more last night. And then cube in for the zoom in, okay? Okay, ready? Anytime. And action. Michelle. Yes? Yes? Stone circle. Stone circle. Stone circle. Stone circle. Like. 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 Roll camera. Roll camera. Roll camera. Das Besondere ist ja eigentlich, dass wir die Realaufnahmen kombinieren mit 3D-Animationen, die sich aber zu einer real geführten Kamera, die nicht so statisch maschinell ist wie computergeführte Kameras, zum Beispiel das Anflug, der also Helikopteranflug, der mit dem realen Helikopter gedreht worden ist, in dieses reale Bild werden Dinge reingebaut wie künstliche Brücken oder Hochweise, die es noch nicht gibt. Das ist eigentlich so einer der aufwendigsten Teile, weil die Technik, die wir verwendet haben, eben auch äh, relativ neu ist. Wir haben eben nicht mit Motion Control gedreht, sondern mit einem Rein und dann mit äh, einem 3D-Tracking die Kameradaten erfasst und dann im 3D-System nachgebaut. Und das ist, was man vorher gesehen hat, wenn man einen Spielfilm äh, aus sich bei Jurassic Park eben Dinosaurier auf der Wiese langlaufen sieht, das aus dem Helikopter rausgefilmt, dann ist das alles Matchmoving per Hand gewählt. Dann wurden auf die Wiese vorher Gitter aufgeklebt und dann entsprechend die 3D-Ebene aber per Hand eben gematchmoved. Das gut eine Woche dauert. Mit einem 3D-Tracking können wir bei einer Szene, wie wir am Anfang sehen, mit diesen Büroshots, das in einem Tag tracken und synchronisieren. Also von Matt Seite gab es keine Schwierigkeiten bei der Kussszene. Er war sogar begeistert, dass wir die an zwei Tagen drehen mussten. Cheryl hat damit auch kein Problem, weil sie ein Profi ist. Das war eigentlich eine ganz normale Szene wie jeder andere. Also, dass wir ein bisschen romantische Musik gespielt haben zur Einstimmung. Gut. So, das ist unser Cybertunnel, wo unsere Darsteller durch die Zeit gehen. Hier diese Linien sind aus Stahl geschweißt. Die ganze Geschichte läuft über eine Rampe, die dann auf zwei Meter ansteigt. Und diese Rampe verjüngt sich nach hinten praktisch in der Unendlichkeit auf Punkt Null. Null. Warum ein Spielfilm für Siemens? Ein Film ist ein Film, Zuschauer ist ein Zuschauer, Zuschauer möchten unterhalten werden, möchten eine Geschichte erleben, möchten von Figuren gefestigt werden, mit denen mitfühlen. Wenn es gelingt, das zusammen mit dem Anliegen einer Firma sich selber darzustellen, zu verbinden, dann ist das ein wunderbarer Anlass, das dem Publikum zu präsentieren. But I forget to tell you that we are going to shoot this with speed. That we are going to shoot this with speed.
das Werk äh, hat einen digitalen Anflug kreiert, sodass dass der Helikopterpilot schon eine Aufnahme bekommen hat, ein Rastermodell, wie er bitte schön fliegen sollte. Alles, was ich mache, wird erstmal skizziert und gezeichnet, koloriert. Und dann irgendwann ist halt der Punkt da, wo man es auch bauen kann. Und in dem Fall eben am Computer. Also was mit Sicherheit noch nicht gemacht wurde oder definitiv noch nicht gemacht wurde und das auch nicht nur in Deutschland, sondern äh, weltweit ist eigentlich die Technik mit dem 3D-Tracking. Also vorher gab es eigentlich nur die Möglichkeit, entweder mit Motion Rewards zu arbeiten. Was den Nachteil gehabt hätte, dass man eben Videodisplays und so Geschichten äh, in dem Hintergrund eben nicht hätte haben können. Und den Nachteil hat, dass man eben mit einer Motion Control dreht, was a teurer ist, zweitens viel länger dauert und dem kann man dann auch wirklich eine ganze äh, Menge von seiner Freiheit nimmt. vor der heranbrausenden Kutsche, dann ist das eine Geschichte, die eigentlich ein Effekt ist. Zwei unterschiedliche Zeitlupe-Geschwindigkeiten bei Vordergrund und Hintergrund, der als solcher nicht erkennbar sein soll, wenn die Schauspielerin getrennt vor Blau gedreht. Wir haben die 1877 in Prag gedreht, weil einfach Prag hat die beste Location. Also die authentischste, wir haben wenigstens die Frau nicht verändern muss. Also wir haben eigentlich eine Straße genommen, die wir so mit Requisiten so herrichten konnten, dass sie glaube ich 1847 ist. Wait a second. Give me a chance to explain. Herr von Siemens. 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 Werner Siemens. Middle class from head to foot. You really must understand that, young man. Your ideas are also revolutionary, but not more than a hint of what will come. believe what I have seen today. Only this. A splendid future lies ahead of us, Holska. It is, in fact, thoroughly and utterly fantastic. Give it to me. Here we go. Lock it up. Very quiet, please. It's up to you now. Die Wohnung von Siemens in Berlin 1847 haben wir gebaut, auch nachdem wir ersten Original Locations gesucht hatten, die aber alle uns was mit Lichtsetzung und so nicht die Möglichkeiten geben, der wir Set bauen. Jetzt haben wir einen Backdrop, das ist ein Gemälde, das man draußen sieht und ein paar Ventilatoren bewegen die Vorhänge und wir hören den Ton ein paar Vögel und eine Hufschmiede irgendwo und dann ist die äh, Illusion perfekt. findet sich auch Wunder an, dorthin programmiertes Salvatore. Do you believe me now? Do you believe me now? Alle 16 Streicher, dann 15 Holz und dann 15 Blech und am Schluss wird alles zusammengemischt. Äh, 
Das Ganze ist auf einer mehrfach 48 Uhr Sony wird das gemacht und, äh, und dazu laufen noch Computer auf Mac parallel. Also es ist eine ziemlich unüberschaubar komplexe Produktion insgesamt geworden. Wie war es bis dahin aus? War ganz gut, wir sollten da irgendwo, ich habe jetzt hier auch die Wälder, bei 30 reingehen. Steine sind keine Steine, sondern sind Tore, die verschiedene, verschiedene Links führen in dieser Cyberwelt, von zwei für uns von Bedeutung sind. Der eine aus der Matt und Cherry kommen, wenn sie aus New York sind, kommen. Und also die blenden dann in so ein helles Weiß die Tore. In dem Moment, wo man durchschreitet und verschlucken die Leute und führen sie woanders hin. Dieser runde Kugel, die wir da sehen, wird. Es steht stellvertretend für eine holographische Projektion, die da stattfinden wird. Cut.